G'day everybody, so what I've got here today is I'm going to have a quick look at um, a couple of smaller sensor sizes, um, a couple of basically good astrophotography cameras, dedicated cooled astrophotography cameras that are good for people that are just getting into the hobby. So I wanted to get a second setup um, because basically I had I've, I've got a couple of telescopes and I only had, you know, I only had one sort of camera at the time that I'm, that I was mainly using. Um, now there's a, there's a, obviously there's a bunch of options between one shot color and, um, mono. Um, I, at this stage wanted to go with a mono setup, but you know, whether or not you're into one shot color or mono, um, there's still that question about which, which camera and which sensor, which sensor size to go for. So I just wanted to have a quick look here. There's a couple of options here and I've recently sold a 183 mm camera. So the three cameras that I'd probably look at if I'm getting into the hobby, the three cameras I'd probably look at, and it doesn't have to be ZWO ASI cameras, it could be any manufacturer, um, would probably be um, a 533, like I've got, over here, I've got this on a little camera lens at the moment. So this is a nice little square censored camera. This is a one shot color, 533 camera. Um, it's a brilliant little camera if you're maybe not interested yet in going down the mono route and you want to stick with a one shot color camera. Super easy, um, super easy to calibrate the frames. Um, just a great, great all round camera that you won't even have to think about if you're using it. Now, I wanted to go for a mono setup on my second rig. And I originally went for a 183 mm. So the two other cameras that I would consider in this space here that are not too expensive, you can pick these up really good prices second hand. You definitely can here in Australia anyway. Um, when I say really good prices, I'm talking about around that sort of, around that 1000, Australian dollar mark. So I originally went for the 183 mm. 183 mm is particularly good for things like if you've got things like camera lenses or if you've got really small focal lengths, say up to 300 mil, 350 mil, something like that, because it, it pairs very nicely with that focal length in terms of your resolution and your pixel scale in terms of sampling and that kind of thing. Um, now that camera worked well for me. It actually worked really well with this setup of my um, 80 millimeter refractor here. And I don't want to get too much, I'm not going to get too much here into which telescope you have. I'm going to assume, you know, maybe you've got a small refractor or maybe you've got a camera lens, but the point is here about which, you know, why is it worth going for these, these cameras and which camera is it worth going for? So, all of these cameras are in that nice kind of range in terms of price. You know, we're talking like between a thousand and one and a half thousand dollars, and you can probably get them really good prices. Second, second hand, you can get those in that sort of really nice price range where you're not having to spend, you're not having to spend a fortune. And in my case, I went with a 183 mm originally, even though I wanted a 1600 mm. So I went with a 183mm and I got myself some secondhand filters. That's why this has got such a big filter wheel on it. Um, and that actually paired really well for certain objects. The problem with the 183 for some setups, like when you get up to this 400 millimeter scope here, is the field of view is a little bit small on that sensor size. Um, so <laughs> eventually what I did, in the last few weeks is I actually swapped out the 183mm. I sold that on and I actually ended up getting a 1600mm. Now the 1600 have been around for a long time. They've got a really good name. They're really super reliable. They've got a nice pixel size, I think 3.8 micron pixel size. So they pair well with most sort of, most telescopes that you're gonna have on the market. Um, and um, they're actually fairly easy now to pick up second hand. Um, I've actually seen about three of these in the last four weeks um, second hand. So anyway, 
I managed to get myself a 1600mm which I've paired with these secondhand 2 inch filters that I've got and the good thing is you can set yourself up you know as a complete imaging system for a very reasonable price then you know maybe you're spending a thousand twelve hundred um you know on your camera and then maybe you can sort of get some secondhand or seven nanometer filters for a reasonable price but the point is you can get yourself started you can also get the smaller filters you only need one and a quarter inch filters for these chip sizes because the chip is quite small so another good positive there um, so that's going to bring the price of the filters um, down somewhat. The other good thing is because you've got a small sensor, there's less chance that you're going to get issues at the edge of your frame with things like elongated stars. You know, if, you're not, if your telescope's not perfectly corrected. So there's a lot of advantages and, you know, I would say to anybody starting out, um, I would highly consider one of these cameras. I think, you know, if you're mainly into camera lenses, so if you're mainly into quite short focal lengths, you know, 150, 250 millimeter, I think the 183 is a very good match because of the pixel size on that particular camera. However, the 533, I managed to mix it with my Samyang lens here. This is a 135 millimeter lens. And you can do things like um, drizzling as well to help if you're a little bit over or under sampled. So there's, there's ways around things. Um, so, you know, it's difficult to uh, recommend one of these, but what I would do is use a program like Stellarium, look at what kind of hardware you're gonna mix and match um, in order to inform your decision about which of these sensors you wanna go with. Um, the 183 does have a slight issue in terms of amp glow on the side of the frames, but that's easily calibrated out with calibration frames. Um, so I think it all depends on what kind of system you're looking to set up. If I probably wanted, if I probably were to, let's say, recommend an all-rounder that's good at everything, I think the 1600 is hard to beat because it's... It's a nice um, uh, four-thirds sensor size, so it's a relatively big um, sensor size, so you can, you're going to fit more in out of any of these options. If I wanted kind of a super easy grab-and-go option, which is going to be really easy to calibrate, I think the 533 one-shot colour is really difficult to beat. And you can always pair it like I have here with a filter drawer and put some great duo narrowband filters in there. Um, and I've got some excellent, excellent images with this. Um, and at the same time, the 183 sensor, um, that makes a great, like I've said, that makes a great pair for those shorter focal lengths. So I think the takeaway here is if you're starting off in astrophotography, you, it's never a, it's not a cheap hobby. We all know that anybody who's in the hobby knows that it's not a cheap hobby, but there are ways to get started without breaking the bank. And there are ways to get your image up in quality to a, to a much better level by simply looking at um, sensors like this, like the 183, like the 1600 mm, like the 533 and it's a nice step up from a DSLR camera without necessarily um, having to break the bank. So look, um, I just wanted to put this video quickly together to say, you know, you probably will end up buying and selling things along the way. I know I have because you, you know, your requirements change and the way that you match equipment up changes. Um, but there's definitely, you definitely don't need the, uh, to break the bank here to get started in the hobby. And what I'll do at the end here is I'll put up some images. I'll put up my most recent image of the Seagull Nebula taken with this camera, the 1600mm. I'll put up the Rosette Nebula, um, which was taken, the Rosette was taken with the 183mm and these little seven nanometer filters. Um, and then finally, I will put up an image of 
um, the Horsehead and Orion that I took with the 533 one shot color. And as you can see, like, you know, all of them can produce good images. So if you're looking to, if you're looking to get into the hobby, these are probably the three cameras. All right, guys, so I think that'll do. I just wanted to sort of give you a little rundown on these three cameras because I have owned um, these three cameras and um, I do think all of these make good options depending on your circumstances as a way to get into the hobby. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you got something out of this and good luck with any of your purchases. Clear skies everyone and I'll see you soon.